have Steph Smith here. Hi, guys. And Kelly O'Leary. Hey, everyone. And why don't you guys tell us what you got? All right, Steph. <laughs> um, me first. Um, I'm doing a deconstructed bubble mohawk, um, also known between Kelly and I as unicorn balls. Um, I did I did something similar to this yesterday, and um, I got a lot of love on it, so I wanted to break it down for you a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. All right. Can we all agree that the 90s are back? Yes. Yeah, you go into every store. I personally love it. I am a big fan of nostalgia, and it's funny. When I go into my comfort zone of doing hair, I usually pick old trends and try to modernize them with new color. And uh, a while ago, I was kind of thinking, you know, what should we do? What should we do? There's always those clients that come into the salon that uh, many years ago, they got the stripey colors. And uh, they asked for it. And now as stylists, I think we kind of cringe a little bit, like maybe not the coolest thing to put out there in the world anymore. Yep. But I was like, how can we modern mar modernize that <laughs> and make it amazing? We can make it rainbow. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to be taking these rainbow panels and just doing little um, rainbow all the way around, all the way down, horizontal. You don't have to do too much. A little bit goes a long way with this kind of technique. Obviously, I've gone all and done the bottom, and I'm going to do back-to-back -back several panels so they're nice and thick and go a long way. All right, Steph, what are you doing with these uh, unicorn balls? All right. So um, first off, I just parted down the mohawk, obviously. We did the uh, Dutch braids on each side to make it nice and slick. I did about three inches from, her, uh, for, from the root, parted that out because I didn't want to put the I didn't want to put them in rubber bands so that they it didn't get like um, kind of too slick, uh, and I didn't really need the rubber band for an anchor, so I'm just leaving that out for now. I did seven partings, about an inch to inch and a half uh, in depth, all the way down the or down to the nape, and backcombing alternating sections. So what I'm doing now is I wanted to show you guys. The, um, what was going on, there's three left here. I took the remainder from this second bubble here, took a top piece from the second one, split the rest in half so that these are loose, one on each side, and then I'm connecting it to the base of the third one. And the reason why I'm doing that is to make the bubble bigger, but also because we're gonna utilize these, uh, the leftover hair to create, uh, fill in any hollow space or anything that's left over at the bend. So. Nice. All right, so as you can see, I'm making very, very thin sections. And to get, those, to get those stripy 90s chunks, you wanna lay another one right over top. You wanna make those big panels. It's funny because I find stylists nowadays will get these photos and they'll come to, they'll come to me because I've been doing it for 20 years. Awesome. And they're like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that, that scene here with the big chunks. And I'm like, back to back boils, come on. That's what I <laughs> got my career on. Right, Steph? Oh, yeah, the chunky Kelly Clarkson highlights. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We talked about those for probably an hour last night. I think that was unnecessary, poss possibly. You know what's what? We, what uh, is, what's your formulation, Kelly? What are you mixing there? Okay, so all of these are all the diluted neons. I love the past. I love the neons. They are amazing. I'm a pastel girl. I tend to try to make all of my clients in uh, Winnipeg pastel clients. I just think it's so soft. So usually I will fill up my... I will fill it up with clear, and then I will slowly add the pigment until I get it to what I want it to be. Some of them are so pigmented, you want to watch out for the Nirvana. I find even one drop can go a long way. That's right, and we always definitely start with the lightest color, right? Yeah. Because if we start with a deeply pigmented color, it'll take you quite a bit of clear to ever get anywhere. You start with that clear and a little bit of pigment as you go, and you'll really get where you want without wasting. So as you can see, I just laid a piece over top. I don't necessarily start at the top. Sometimes I'll start a little bit lower just to anchor that hair down. Let's say that a hair stretches and falls over top and then you have one hair that's orange and you're looking at it going, this has ruined my life. I promise you in the great scheme of things, it will all blend in. It'll be super soft. So don't, don't be too hard on yourself. And Steph, can you tell us what you did with her color there before this? Okay, so yesterday I um, did Mina's color and um, she has her natural root. Uh, I've actually been loving having models that have a natural regrowth because I feel that that's something in a salon uh, environment that gets utilized a lot. People want to either grow out their bleach retouch or they want to just be maybe a little bit fun and try something that will just uh, fade out nicely. 
So um, I mix smoke and candy, which seems to be my favorite over the root. I feel like it just softly tones down any warmth that's left over. It kind of creates a smoky purple, um, almost maybe a mauve, depending on what the level is that you're starting with. Uh, so that's kind of my go-to, and then I just did different variations of purples and pinks through the rest, depending on, she had a couple of bands of gold bands left over, so uh, I wanted to make sure that I was covering those with the deeper colors and utilizing the lightest parts to uh, give her like the ultimate pastel kind of colors, which of course is everyone's goal, right? They all want pastels but sometimes and you can't have it. Using that natural root, it really ends Girl. up being something you could use for most of your clients, right? If the clients that you have, a, most people have a ton of balayage clients, not necessarily unicorns all day, right? No. But something like this, they don't feel like they're going crazy because it's not bleached root to end. They can wear these colors and then go back to their balayage, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's actually, I love the way um, a balayage uh, vivid looks after it's like almost all the way uh, rinsed out because you're just getting a little bit of those hues uh, closer up to the root and um, it's great. I love it. So I often say that it's like a gateway, right? Like they'll always come back wanting a little purple. bit more. Purple. Yes. Purple. It's the gateway. It's funny. I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba and uh, the amount of like the amount of creative color clients that I have is huge, huge. People always say, how do you find these clients in Winnipeg? And it's just, honestly, it's like that. Just adding a little bit slowly to people and then they, they love it, they get a lot of compliments, they get lots of attention, and then they want more. And then they're, then they're all pink, all rainbow. Yeah. Kelly, do you use that pattern underneath in the mesh as sort of like a template for each section you lay down? So if you have layers, you don't end up going through the entire thing as it falls? If you have shorter layers and you lay them over that, yep. that rainbow, you use it as a template? Yeah, you can go right on over that. That's why I like using mesh because you can see right through it so that can be your guide and help clean you up a little bit. Right now what I'm going to be doing to keep the chunks is I will be using my negative space here to do my base color, which is blush and candy. We pre-lightened her this morning and she is quite warm. I'm a firm believer in that you don't need to lighten every single client's hair to white. You're just, that's not realistic to life. It's not, it's not good for their hair, to be honest. And uh, you wanna work with what you have. So using a pink base, even going in with the blush, I saw that I might need a little bit more. So just add your candy. If you have some residual other creative colors in there that are hard to get out, I find that if somebody is willing to have pink hair and if they're willing to have purple hair, they're willing to have a little piece of blue or they're willing to have something that's gonna help buffer that situation out that nobody will ever even notice. Well, Their colors come a long way. Let's be real, they want silver hair. Let's, well, right? Do you ever choose to tone the canvas before you're gonna do something like this? I don't personally. I know a lot of people that do and you'll get a little bit more of a metallic look. Uh, the toners work fast, they're amazing. It gives a little bit of a different look. Honestly, in the salon, I usually don't. I just, I formulate my colors to go around what I'm doing. I fix it with so colors. The reason why we have all these uh, rubber bands and these sectionings in such small sections is so that we have that anchor to um, really make sure that the style stays. Um, you would think that you just put three pon ponytails, back comb the shit out of it, and then start pinning around it. but. In actuality, that's probably, it's, it's more likely to fall depending on the texture of their hair. Uh, so this is why I kind of break it down into smaller sections. Um, also, you can make it a little bit bigger. Um, she has a lot of hair, but not everyone has a lot of hair and they want to get like, you know, that really uh, voluminous mohawk look or any kind of look that has to do with, uh, or any kind of updo really. So um, just think about that, I guess, when you're doing kind of fun styles like this, or even if they're more sleek, you still need those those extra sections, so. And I know David mentioned earlier about the new raving collection that's coming in July. This is a really good example of like a grungy tone and the kind of things you can expect in those five colors that are coming. So over the next month, you'll see the shades in our, in our promos and social media, and it'll be really this like kind of alternative feel. It's gonna be really exciting. Honestly, guys. We're gonna bring out some models so that you can see Kelly's after. Yeah. Somebody that we have done just like this, right Kelly? Yep, there we go. Come on out, Erica. We did a little bit of a different base instead of the pink, working with the smokiness. But yeah, you can still see the rainbows. And I only did like four panels. It goes a long way and it looks kind of holographic.